So a lot of people have asked me to do a video on um, my basic hand independence workshop. Um, so I figured I'd do just a quick one, uh, kind of about what it's all about, you know. Um, so this is based off of the first chapter of my book, which at this point in time is not written yet. Um, but this is kind of a condensed version of that. So uh, hand independence. Basically, think of um, the opposite of playing right, left, right, left, right, left, you know. Or left, right, left, right. So it's kind of the opposite of that. It's an untethering of your hands uh, to where you don't have to rely on starting on one hand um, and then kind of beyond that, um, you know, implementing uh, where you can play one thing in one hand and one thing in the other. So there's a few uses for it. Uh, the first is to play, I'll kind of break it down, not from easiest to hardest, but from starting with melody. Um, you can play two melodies at the same time, so like something like... Uh, you know, something like that. Uh, that'd be two melodies together, just a rough example. Um, and then you could play like um, a melody in one hand and harmony in the other. So like, um, you know, something like that. That's very basic, but you get the point. Um, and then you can play uh, like different harmonic patterns together where you're playing harmony in two hands, like. Something like that. Uh, and then the last one would be to play like an ostinato pattern, like um, play an ostinato in one hand and then play a melody in the other. So, you know, something like that. Um, but yeah, so there's a couple of uses for it. Now, how does it break down? And so what I've done is I kind of, you know, this is a natural way that I play. I hear things and um, this is just my hands just do these things. Um, so I had to really go back and break it down into the most basic things. And I broke it down uh, to four different patterns. So the first pattern is a drone. So from this G, that'd be a drone. Here's a drone on the left hand. Second pattern would be a root to fifth pattern. So jumping from the root of whatever chord you're playing to the fifth of the chord, so something like this. Or the third pattern would be an arpeggio, so. chords, minor chords, diminished chords, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then the last pattern is your scales, so... And so all of your scales, um, in the box, outside of the box, you know, uh, major, minor, Dorian, so, you know... like that. So those are your four basic patterns. Um, and the idea is to take each of these patterns and work them individually on each hand um, by themselves without anything else. And you do that to basically get the muscle memory um, of each of those patterns. And that, so they kind of go from simple to difficult. So the drone note is very simple, then you up the difficulty a little bit with the root to fifth. And you go even farther than that with the arpeggio and then uh, scale patterns kind of help you start to work on um, melody lines. Um, so yeah, start with, obviously the drone note's pretty simple. But then what you should do is get muscle memory for like the root to fifth pattern. Just sit there and play that root to fifth pattern just like that. Until it's in muscle memory. Do the same with your left hand. 
again, the key is to get muscle memory for this. Once, once it can go on autopilot, then the hand independence starts to form. And I'll show you what I mean. Because what you, after you've learned these patterns in each hand and you've gotten the muscle memory for them, what you start to do is combine these patterns. So uh, to start with, we could do a root fifth pattern in one hand while we're doing a drone in the other hand. What you can do uh, is change the tempo of each. So I like to play one in double time and one in regular time. So I'll go. See how the left hand that's on a drone is hitting every other beat? One, two, one, two, one. And you can do the opposite. But then what you start to do is progress with these patterns. So instead of doing root fifth and a drone, you can do two root fifths. And play them in different times, so something like this. And then you start to up, you start to build on top of it, um, and you end up with things. Um, you could do an arpeggio in one hand and a root and fifth in the other, uh, one in double time, one in single time, or both together. So here's together. Right hand double time, left hand single time. Then the opposite. And then you'll start to do these with scales, so... And the idea is to just do these really slow. Uh, and gradually build up to harder exercises. Um, and what this does um, is it starts to get your hands used to working it. It's, it's kind of, each is a stepping stone that gets your hands used to working uh, separately from one another. Um, and these are, this is more of the tedious side of things. Um, we haven't even talked about putting a melody in it yet, but the idea is the same whenever you add a melody. So generally, melodies are going to be up higher, not always, but um, whenever you're starting to learn a melody, what you should do, presuming that it's up high, learn the melody in your left hand. So we'll do Mary Had a Little Lamb. So I learned the whole melody. progress with each of those patterns and I for now since this is basic I stay on one chord so for example I would start with a drone note let's go yeah you get it you get how how it works and then I'd progress let's do an arpeggio And then you start playing around with the tempo. Not, well, with both the tempo and uh, double time, single time. So I could go. And you start to build off of that melody. And again, this is still, since it's basic hand independence, this is still exercises, even though we're playing a melody, Treat it as an exercise to help you start building that hand independence. Um, and once you start to get it down, then you progress with changing the chords around. So right now we were just staying on a G chord, but Mary Had a Little Lamb goes to a D chord. So in the very beginning of the video, when I played it, I went to that D chord um, down here. But yeah, so you would progress by working these patterns in different progressions and um, and then starting to fit those progressions together, uh, learning again with drone, root fifth, arpeggios, um, and then scales and learning those different progressions um, in each hand. Uh, but that's about it for the basic hand independence. I know this is a pretty quick video on a pretty loaded topic, but um, 
yeah, hopefully my book will be out soon. And um, if you're inter interested in something like that, uh, you can go to my website, uh, Colin Beasley, so C O L I N B E A S L E Y dot T K, like T as in, I don't know, <laughs> T, you know, T, the letter after S, and then K as in K. Yeah. Uh, and then my email is Colin Beasley HD for Hammer Dulcimer at gmail.com. Um, send me an email and I'll get you signed up for the email list so you can get updates on uh, music that comes out or my book that comes out or uh, in more instructional videos or, you know, whatever news might be happening, festivals I'm at. But yeah, well, I hope you got something out of this video um, and I hope to see more of you using hand independence in your playing. Thank you.